We live inside a giant pile of data. Digital life runs on information. It is information. Hey Siri, can you give me directions to the grocery store? It adds 10 minutes to your route. But not just digital life. All kinds of things in the physical world are the way they are because of data. Arrived. Traffic patterns. Train schedules. The price of eggs. Look, we all have a complicated relationship with data. It's given us personalization. It gives us insights into how the world works. It lets us be smarter in how we interact with each other. Okay, cool. But, and I know this isn't news. Ready, have a good day. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Data is being collected from us, constantly. From you, from me, from people everywhere. Where would you like to go? Okay, now let's drive to work. Getting driving directions to work. We share personal information all the time. Tons of it we do deliberately, on purpose. We post to social media, we send emails, we send text messages. Hey Siri, can you send a message to Eric? Tell him I'm running late. Your message to Eric says... And most of the time, we think of these things as private. We might not think about the tech giants who own the platforms we're using to communicate. Facebook's share price tumbled today. The tech giant is on the defensive. Amazon is now storing government data on the cloud, selling internet-connected door locks, making the popular Alexa smart. Or even if we know it's not private, we think of our data as protected, safe. This doesn't always work out. A massive hack of the company Equifax has compromised the personal information of as many as 143 million Americans. There's been a massive data breach that's compromised sensitive information for millions of people. This one happened at Capital One. And then there's all this other information we shed, almost passively, involuntarily, without even knowing it. And not just our phones, our smart TVs, or kitchen appliances, or robot vacuums, or exercise machines. And again, we know all this. We know our data is being collected. We even know it's being used to show us ads or targeted content. It's a truth about life online today that many of us take for granted. But in doing so, we all might be getting a little bit complacent. The question is, where does convenience end? And where does surveillance begin? This season on Technically Optimistic, we're taking a deep dive into your data. Who's collecting it? Where's it all going? And how is data shaping the world around us? How is data collection changing healthcare? What does it mean to now be targeted because of who you are and have your data targeted because of the kind of healthcare you're seeking and where you live? Our criminal justice system. Should all of the people whose faces are in the database be part of a lineup every time a crime is committed? Our children. The kids notice immediately that there are patterns. And then they're like, how? How does this happen? And how we connect with each other. I am trying to develop a new model of social media based around much, much more user control. How should you think about the future of data? At Technically Optimistic, we believe that we can have a data-driven world with all the benefits, but it's your data. So we want to make sure that you have a say in how your data is used. The reality is, You have the power to shape that future. And that starts with understanding how this all works. So let's do this. I'm Rafi Krikorian, and season two of the Emerson Collective podcast, Technically Optimistic, is all about your data. And it's coming soon. So subscribe now to Technically Optimistic on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.